have merits. And therefore, people do tshuva for you. I'm a tuki. I'm the little parrot. I say stuff that Hashem tells me to say, and that's it. You guys have merits. I'll tell you what merits you have. Now, one of the most difficult things in this generation to do tshuva for, for women, is kisugosh. Covering hair. Now, we've talked about this again. I told you on Sunday we're not going to talk about it again, but then I told you we are going to talk about it. We'll talk about it. Why? Because that night... Hey, it's not my fault. That night, I got home. I got lecture, I got an email from one of my students in Canada. Ishtabach Shemol Ad, best story yet. Many people have told me that they've made the change, the tshuva, and so on. I actually, even have a keilav chabad, by the way. I can't tell you where because then there's going to be problems. A whole keilav chabadnikot. These little chabadniks, women. Everybody put kisui rosh on. Everybody took off the wig. Chabad. That's like Mashiach. He brought the Mashiach. Mama, you have a whole keila in the West Coast that the whole Chabad, all the women decided we're going to put Kisui Rosha on, no more wigs. But this story beats it. In my opinion, you guys can decide. This story beats it. Now, the whole machloke, the debate for years already of whether it's a uh, modest, not modest, we're not going to go into that. We talked about how it's the source of real hair wigs is Avodah Zarah. It's from India. It's creating Avodah Zarah. They're doing it as Abu Dazara and so on and so forth. We're not going to repeat it because we're running out of time. And we haven't even started the real part of the Mishnah. So, people keep telling me, whenever I come up with new information, they always say, yeah, but this one said this, but this one said that. Everybody always has rebuttals. Why? Because they want to continue wearing wigs. And I always said, if they fought as much for the mitzvah of Shabbat, as they do for the mitzvah of the wig, that they think is a mitzvah, Am Yisrael would keep, all of Am Yisrael would keep Shabbat, instead of only 20% of it. Most of the people that fight me are not the women, it's actually the men. Which ones? The rabbis. The rabbis fight me all the time. It's the most insane thing in the world. They don't stop texting me and emailing me and calling me nonstop. It's the most annoying thing in the world. I have to put them on block because they don't stop. But anyway, it's a very, very difficult transition. What well, if you go from nothing to a scarf on your head? It's, it's not easy, but it's not impossible. Because you just you go from nothing to something. But to go from a wig that makes you look like a model to a mitpachat that makes you look like a Jew, it's a big transition, especially when everyone else still looks like models. It's a big peer pressure, difficulty, and so on and so forth. So I said, listen, it's not a matter of modesty only. It's also a matter of Avodah Zarah. It's Ten Commandments. It's basic Judaism 101. The, the hair comes from India. It's Avodah Zarah. So now people always say, no, but maybe they didn't mean it for it to be Avodah Zarah. And one Prosek said that if they really didn't mean it, and it was really only their fathers that meant it, and it was really not them that meant it, or was somebody else that meant it, and really the statue wasn't there, it was really in a different room, and then they didn't really give him any money for it, and all these stuyot excuses of why it's not Abu Dazara, nonsense. Point is, people keep fighting for it. I think this story, if anyone understands the story, the magnitude of the story, I think this is like a nail in the coffin. If you want to know the woman, I give you the information. Her name is Malika, she lives in Canada. Baruch Hashem, did full tshuva with this thing. What does she say? She says, she sends me a story, it's, it's like long overdue, and she says that after she realized all of the problems with the wigs, she realized we can't do this anymore. We can't keep wearing, uh, praying to Hashem with Abu Dazara on our head. It's like telling your wife you love her with your girlfriend right here. It's not going to work. It's not going to work. It's just not going to work. You can't have Abu Dazara on your head and tell Hashem, hey, Hashem, uh, help me out with some parnasa. Give me the fuash lima. Give me this. Give me. You can't. It's not, it's not possible. So now, Rabotai Karim, she says, we have to do tshuva. Her husband, Baruch Hashem, tzaddik, agrees. She puts kisu roshan. Now, the first night, she goes to the shul. Everybody looks at her like she has six heads. <laughs> Whoa! What happened? Because there's only one other woman in the whole Kila that has a scarf on her head. Everyone else has uh, Marilyn Monroe's hair. 
Everyone else has wigs and this and that. Everyone has. So they're all looking. Whoa. But they were nice enough to like say, oh, oh, well, good for you. You know, they weren't like some of the other people that I have. One woman that put a uh, mitpachat on, she was a uh, mola, she was a teacher in a yeshiva. A teacher in yeshiva in London. She came to the yeshiva with the mitpachat, the principal of the school, the head rabbi of the school, came to her and says, if you don't take that off and put a wig on, I'm firing you. Head rabbi of a yeshiva. Rabbi is like this, we don't need satan, he's already doing it. So anyway, Rabotai Karim. She comes to the shul, everyone looks like she has six heads, but little by little they cool off, and then some people give even compliments, they're nice enough about it, but still, you never really know. Maybe they're going to say something bad after, maybe this, maybe that, you never really know. You need some extra fire. What did I tell you in the beginning of the shul? What did Rosh Lakish say? Abali ta'el misayin biyado. Someone that comes to become purified, Hashem gives him a hand. How much of a hand? How much does he need? Custom made. She arrives home, she goes home. She has a little four-year-old, cute little angel. And the little cute little angel goes into a room that no one goes into. Some room that is used for storage in the house. It's used for storage. And he comes out with what? A J.C. Penny statue in his hand. He comes out with, why? Where's the statue coming from? She's not a Christian. Her husband's not, what happened? They were storing some stuff for an old tenant who never picked up his stuff. And they said when he picks up his stuff, eventually we'll give it to him. They didn't know. They didn't look through his stuff. It's his stuff. So they just left it in this room that they don't use anyway. Little four-year-old angel came in there. She sees she has the statue. Not only that used to be on her head. Used to be in the house. Baruch Hashem. She destroys the statue like she's obligated to do. Only mitzvah with statues are to destroy them. So Hashem showed her, listen, good, you had the statue on your head, but you also had it in your house. Because you removed it out of your own will from your head, I'll remove it out of your house. Million bucks or not? (laughs) Worth coming tonight just for this story, right? If you guys have the story here, I haven't printed out, but it would take me longer to say it. There's actually more details to the story, but I didn't get the point. And that's Ashrechem Israel. For such people, Hashem created the world. For such people, Hashem continues the world. Because it says every Yom Shishi, every Shabbat, we say, Hashem Lamabu Yashav. God sat while He destroyed the world with the flood. How come He doesn't destroy the world? People like this do tshuva. People like this do tshuva. You have to understand, you come to Yeshua, you give power to the speaker, you give him something to say. Hashem gives him word to say because of you. That's also Kiruv. It's not just this, it's not just, it's not one thing. It's a million parts, it's a machine. It's a machine that works.